how accessories can change the look to any outfit, clearing out my boot selection, and what is an if-then statement and how does it relate to your personal style? Hi guys, welcome or welcome back to my channel. If this is your first time here, my name is Shakura and I believe that when you feel good, you look good. So on this channel, I show you how to take fashion and use it as a tool to help you look and feel your best. So you know that we have been talking about leap for the last few videos, we've talked about layering, we've talked about experimenting with color and patterns, and now we're gonna talk about accessorizing, which is the A in leap. If you have been following me on my style evolution journey, you know that I have said many times that I rather opt for quality versus quantity. And luckily, that is exactly what Lily Silk offers. This is just the perfect collaboration because you guys know I've been talking that I love silk and I love wool and I love cashmere. I've been saying this in many, many videos and Lily Silk has just that. I have three tops from Lily Silk that I'm going to style and show you the impact that accessories have as long as you have good quality basics. So the first shirt that I want to style is the one I'm actually wearing. This one from Lily Silk is a beautiful color. Again, you all know that I love jewel tones. We've been talking about that for a while. This 100% silk shirt fits perfectly into my wardrobe or my new wardrobe that I'm trying to build, right? First way I thought about styling the shirt was with a pair of leather pants. My size is different now. The pants that I did have to wear with this do not fit anymore. So I had to do a default. These leather shorts have been so good for me during my weight loss as there is an elastic band that has been shrinking with me. So I had to pair this beautiful Lily Silk shirt with an oversized blazer, these leather shorts, and these flat cape boots. You have seen these boots before, right? And I felt like it was a very easy, breezy look. Now, I should have put a pair of tights on because it's cold outside. And if I were to wear this outside, that is exactly what I would do. A pair of thick black tights is what I would wear with this instead. And I'm out the door. The outfit is not overly ambitious, right? It's not doing too much. It's doing enough. However, switching up the accessories gives it a whole different vibe. If I were to wear this too broad short to go out with my husband, I would pair it with these beautiful bronze boots. It gives the look a whole new vibe. And the bronze boots against this beautiful green color in this silk shirt is chef's kiss. In fact, I wanted to highlight the color of this shirt by pushing up the sleeves on the blazer and letting the sleeves of the shirt hang out so that you can see the color, it adds a bit of layering, and it goes really well, like I said, with those boots. But while I prefer to have worn this with a pair of leather pants, the leather shorts work just fine, but wearing it with the black boots was a quick, kind of cute everyday outfit. With the bronze boots, we punched it up just a little bit. So another example of having really good basic staples and using accessories to style and add interest to an outfit is with this wool sweater, also from Lily Silk. And if I were to wear it to work, I would pair it with this beautiful black skirt, most comfortable heeled black boots, and a big bag for work. It's not overly done. It's easy to wear to work. On my coat, you guys saw me buy, and I'll be out, out the door. It's not overly dramatic. It's a fine enough outfit I look put together and taken care of and it's just fine, right? But then when I switch out the black boots and the black purse and keep the beautiful sweater, switch out the boots for a red pair of boots, these are from Paris, Texas, or this beautiful red clutch changes everything and it really just punches up the look a little bit. Now, I would actually still wear this to work. And the reality is you might like the first vibe better and that's fine. The point here is, is that accessories with good quality basics can be utilized to cater to your style and your mood. What I love about this black silk top is the details that it has in the front. It does help hide my belly a bit, but it also 
just adds a little detail to the shirt and gives it a little bit more va 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 boom if you will right so i decided to pair it for an everyday work outfit with these pants that i've had for so long right and then with these gucci loafers and my big work bag again this is absolutely fine i would feel good and comfortable in it at work but if i wanted to punch it up just a Bit, would probably go back to those bronze boots because these pants have a bit of slit in the side of it when I walk you can see a little bit those boots right I would then use that same bag this wouldn't be to work obviously because I'm not wearing these high shoes to work I would pair that use that same bag and instead of my wool coat I would use this beautiful black coat that I've had forever to give me that cookie lines effect and in my eyes, this is probably the most dramatic, probably because of the coat, because the coat is very dynamic in my opinion. But you can clearly see how this can be worn to work or this can be worn afterward. Power is in the good quality basics and the accessories. Lily Silk has some timeless and classic pieces. Even if you wouldn't describe your style as such, those basic quality pieces can be infused, I believe, in most people's style. Like I said, you all know that I've been trying to really go for silks and cashmere and wool, some good quality basics, and Lily Silk is a perfect place to look for that. They are having some sales on Black Friday. You all know that there's nothing better that I like than a sale to keep money in my bank account <laughs> and shopping. So if you want to look at some beautiful Lily Silk pieces, use Cora 15 on any purchase for 15% off, or for orders $500 and over, use Cora 20 and you will get 20% off. So I have been going through my wardrobe. I told you all that I got rid of about three or four bags of coats that I will no longer be using that just didn't serve me anymore. And I should have showed you that process, but I feel like with my boots, it's a little more tedious <laughs> and I'm going to bring you along. I am not showing you all my boots today, but we are going to go through a few that I am questioning, tell you my thought process, tell you why I may or may not be keeping them. I only did a few, so maybe next week we'll do some more depending upon how this goes. But yeah, let's go through some of my boots. So I just have to keep it real here. I feel like these look cheap. I have no problem with wearing inexpensive things, but I prefer them to not look like they're inexpensive. These are actually Vince Camuto, um, and I've had them for so many years, but I feel like um, the folds at the bottom of the boot, perhaps the shape of it, maybe even the print, because this is obviously not real snakeskin. Something is giving cheap and I am, ah, I don't know and the thing is <laughs> I like a neutral color boot I love a white boot I love a brown boot but something about this is just not it if I'm being completely honest or maybe I'm tripping listen I need you guys to reel me back in if these look decent and maybe I'm I've just lost it um, let me know but in my eyes right now they're not giving luxurious and yeah, I don't know. Let me know what you think. So the truth is when I'm looking for a neutral colored boot to go wherever, I opt for this one. This is suede, it's Paris, Texas. I got it on a crazy sale. And to me, it just looks and feels a little bit more luxurious right so there are creases in the boot but it's because of the way that it is cut as opposed to them cutting in the creases which I 
absolutely hate on the first pair of boots, right? There's something about this that's giving a little more luxurious, a little bit more, I don't know, just high end. And I'm, again, might be exaggerating about this and I may just be making up excuses. I don't know, you, you let me know, but I like these a lot better. These, however, are a little bit more high maintenance, but I am high maintenance, so I have no problem <laughs> no problem maintaining anything so yeah let me know what you think these or the first pair I'm gonna go with these so the color of these boots are spectacular however I just feel like the color should be I don't know in a dress maybe in a shirt maybe in a pair of heels but in the form of these boots, it's really not screaming luxurious to me, right? I, I don't know, and I hate to say this because I really do love color, but this color, even though I think it's pretty, I don't think I like it for my style in particular um, in this form. And I, I'm also not loving the top of the boot being in a cow in a cowboy style, excuse me, just because I feel like it already has a lot going on. The cowboy style, the bright color. I might enjoy it more if the top were just straight and the color maybe a little bit more muted. I don't know. I, I never reach for these or wear these anymore. So I'm really just trying to break it down and really come to grips with the things that I don't wear. Let me know. Now, I'm going to already tell you, these are a no. Oh, almost tripped. <laughs> these are a no. They are from Zara. I do not like the way they feel on the inside. They were not expensive. Um, they are not leather. But I just, uh, I don't know. I recently actually saw one of the Yusef style these exact boots in a very nice way. She had a full black dress on. I believe it was like an A-line dress. She had on some really cool sunglasses and these boots just peeked out from underneath the dress. I don't know if they're saying cheap to me because I know that they are cheap <laughs> and I know that they're not leather. That could be it. But I, I, I know I don't reach for them. And what's the point of keeping them if I don't reach for them? So, you know, you guys let me know. I feel like it's a beautiful color. And I do want a few statement boots in my collection. I just feel like I have to be a little bit more particular. And if I'm going to do that, I don't think these make the cut. While we're talking about statement boots, I feel like this is more of a statement boot that I would keep in my collection. Though, honestly, I do not reach for these often because when you kind of look at my mood board, this doesn't really come into play. However, the shape of these boots are bar none. I love how comfortable they are. I got them on a crazy sale. They were supposed to be six or seven hundred dollars. I think I got them for two hundred maybe. I might be making all those numbers up but I know I got them on a beautiful sale, right? So just because I got them on sale that doesn't necessarily mean that I have to keep them but I do want a pair of statement boots in my closet and if I have to choose I would choose these over the green ones now i probably would not wear this with anything else pink because that might be there there go dancing again because <laughs> that might just be too much however i would just wear it um how i described it before right with an all black skirt with these just peeping out well, that's necessarily black but everything else neutral with these being the focus even if i wore like a pair of jeans a white button up some cool sunglasses and these as the focus of the outfit that would be something that i would do it would be um just a, a statement boot and i don't know you guys let me know. I feel like I like these better than the other ones as far as statement boots are concerned. This is definitely not an everyday type of situation. What is an if-then statement? And how does that tie into your personal style? You can have an it-then statement in English, in Excel, and even math. It's quite literally just a statement 
with a hypothesis and a conclusion. If this happens, then this happens. But what does that have to do with developing your personal style? So we got our three words. Just to remind you, my three words are glam, classic, and sensual, right? And then we also had, what was your why? We had to figure out why we like what we like, who we are, where that came from. But today we are going to ask ourselves, what is your if? When I was trying to figure out what I was gonna do in the beginning of the year, I had to ask myself a few questions. What if I lose weight and keep it off? What if I start dressing authentically for me with not considering trends and, and not caring what other people think about how I dress, right? What if I just did it for me? What, would, what could possibly be the outcome? What if people don't consider me a fashion girl anymore, despite having had gone to fashion school and studying the art and the history, and not only formally being educated in the subject, but also on my own, always searching and learning more about creative directors and styling and even internships, I, I, was, um, I was all in, okay? <laughs> and what if I'm not able to reach teach people about fashion anymore because the title of fashion girl only goes to the trendiest people? If I decide not to center trends around my wardrobe and really just wear luxurious, beautiful things that make me happy, I might not be able to teach people about the trends because they might not see me in that position. So really, an if-then statement, you know, is just really easy. If the weather is nice, then I will play outside. Hypothesis and conclusion. And I was just trying to figure out what my ifs were. Not only figure what they were, because I figured that out, but figure out what conclusion I could come to and honestly what would make me feel good in making these decisions. I went through many different conclusions in my head and really tried to weigh the pros and cons and just to keep me living the way I want to live right and looking but also being able to do what I want to do. I went through a lot. And I really just came up with things that I feel like is going to help me through this transition. So if I lose weight, then I will feel more confident. You know, I hate talking about this and I keep telling you guys this because I really feel like you should be confident in every size you are, right? And I really don't like talking about it, and, but this is just personal, right? So I'm trying to keep it personal. If you are whatever size you are, you need to feel confident in however size you are at that moment. However, if I'm keeping it real, I'm not always confident if I don't feel good in my body. If I start dressing authentically, then I would be happier and more comfortable with how I occupy the world. Listen, I am too old really to be not doing what I wanna do, right? I understand that there are many ways to present to the world. And at this big age, I have to present to the world in the way that's gonna make me the most happy. Like I say at the beginning of every one of my videos, when you look good, you feel good. And that is how I intend to live the rest of my life. If people don't consider me a fashion girl anymore, then I can accept it, but not agree with it. Listen, if at some point somebody has the audacity <laughs> to come out and tell me that I'm anything but a fashion girl, I, I would have to read them their rights, okay? There are plenty of people who are considered fashion girl, rightly so. They have, you know, a really beautiful look. They put clothes together extremely well. However, I might not be the fashion girl in that sense. However, I know what I'm talking about. I, again, have been formally trained. I train myself. I do extensive research. I'm sure you could tell you guys by my videos that I research, I read, I research, I read, I research, I read, okay? So at this point, if someone can say, oh, she's not a fashion girl, 
ain't listen i just don't agree <laughs> okay then we'll disagree we'll agree to disagree i don't agree if i'm not able to reach or teach people about fashion anymore because the title of fashion girl only goes to the trendiest people then i will forge my own path i am so aware that my videos are a bit different than what's usually on youtube and i know that i'm doing it quite differently and I also know that, that might take me a longer time to get to where I want to get to. Just because I'm not doing it traditionally, I know I might have to forge my own path and I'm ready to do that. So I had many things to consider what my ifs were. I went through so much in considering what I should do and really just solidifying and, 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 and honing in on my own personal style, if it was going to be beneficial or not, how it would help me. How would I still be able to do what I really want to do? And, you know, I went through a lot <laughs> mentally. What's keeping you from fully leaning into your style? I gave you a mouthful, right? What are your ifs? What are your ifs? What is keeping you from doing this? Is it um, the overconsumption of social media and everything you see you just want to buy? Is it you thinking that you need to look a certain way? The what ifs will kill your personal style. And if you are an overthinker like I am, I encourage you to come up with your thens, your what ifs, and get a conclusion for your then so you can really just tap in to what you know and love because honestly what if you never live your life authentically then you will probably not be as happy as you could be so i have so many products that i need to get through prior to me buying a whole new set of products. I'm determined to finish a few before I go and bring more things in to my house. I wanna show you a few things that for some reason I stopped using, but I know that they work and I kinda of wanna get back into using them so that I could use them up. This first one is a night serum for my hair. When I first saw night serum and I saw the brand, I didn't think that this would work for my type 4 black women hair pretty much right because all of the people i found using this were white women they were asian women so i needed someone that had hair like me to see if this would work and i didn't find much but for some reason i bought it and then after i bought it i did end up finding another black woman who liked it as well so that kind of solidified my purchase I guess. I was using this pretty heavily for so long. In fact, I have used over half of this. When I put my braids in, I don't use it anymore. But now that I've taken them out, I'm getting back into it and hopefully finishing it. And if I love it, then I would buy it again. I will say that in my opinion, this has worked well for keeping my hair moisturized without shrinking it. I know a lot of moisturizers, um, if you're natural, if you're a black woman with natural hair, you understand that a lot of moisturizers you put in your hair shrink your hair, right? And this, for some reason, whatever it's in here, it keeps it moisturized, but it also keeps it in its stretch state. And these days, though I am still natural and have not relaxed my hair, I have been keeping it in a stretch state simply because because it is easier for me just to throw back in a ponytail. Staying with hair or staying on hair, if you're not new here, you know that I often talk about the woes of being an elder millennial. <laughs> and one of those things that come along with being an elder millennial is having more gray hair than I thought that I would ever have. I've had gray hair since probably my 20s, but it's definitely definitely much more now. So I do look for easy ways than having to dye my hair all the time just because I don't want to put chemicals in my hair often. Um, I'm definitely due for a dye right now. It's been quite a while. But in between dye jobs, I was trying to use this and it wasn't, this is the wow, the color wow. I'm sure a lot of you have used this or seen this. I was trying to use this and it just was not working properly. I don't know if I was using the wrong side of the brush. Like 
if anyone knows which side should I be using? Is it the small side or the big side? I'm not 100% sure, but I know that it really wasn't staying um, and it really wasn't helping the way that I thought it should be. So I did go to Amazon and I've been using these quick cover root touch up. It's like a mascara, but for your hair. I've been using that when it's time to touch up my grays, but I, I have a full product right here that I want to really try to get through. So let me know how you best have used this. Am I using the wrong end of the brush? I feel like I've been using the small end. You know what guys? I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. I'm going to try it and play with it again. Maybe look at some reviews, but it just was not working for me and I need to try to use as much as I can if possible. Still staying with hair even though this is not the hair on my head. <laughs> This is the Vanish PFB. Listen, if you have ingrown hair, this is how you take care of it. Again, I don't know why I stopped using this. It works so well. This is why I hate being overwhelmed with the amount of products that I have. I just want to get through this. This is actually almost done. And as soon as this is done, I'm probably gonna get another one because I know how well this works. I was trying something else. It, it wasn't working. So I do know why I stopped. I remember I was trying something else. It doesn't work as well as this. If you have tried this before, you just have to be consistent. And when you're consistent, magic happens. So this is not on like Sephora. It might be, it might be an Ulta. I'm not 100% sure. I don't remember, but I, of course I will connect it. It's just a roller ball here, right? And you just roll it on to wherever you have like problems with ingrown hair and it's just perfect. And not only is it ingrown hair, it also lightens the spot where you have those problems. So again, I talked about this before. I'm almost done. I did stop for a while to try something else, but I'm back. I'm finishing this off. And yeah, let me know if you ever tried this before. So I don't know if this was too strong for me. Oh, let's, let's rewind a little bit. This is the necessary body retinol. This is a body retinol and 10% AHA is what it says. And it's fragrance free. And I don't know that I gave it enough time um, to see results, but I feel like I was overusing it. I'm pretty sure I was trying to use it every day. It was, I was trying to prepare for the summer, right? And get like my, my decolletage and my, and my shoulders all like ready for the summer. So I started to use this but like I said, I, was, I think I was using it too much and it started to burn and I got really irritated. I have very sensitive skin, so I have to really be careful. But I feel like I'm gonna try this again throughout the winter. Cause I, I think, I feel like I was rushing to get my, the skin that I really wanted <laughs> um, for the summer. I'm gonna try it again throughout the winter and introduce it like I did my retinol for my face. When I started using retinol for my face, I didn't use it every single day. I use it once a week, the next week I use it twice, and so on and so forth. So I might do the same thing for this. I'm not quite sure why I didn't do that originally, but I do wanna give this another try. I mean, retinol for your body, that should work wonder. So we shall see. And then with a little bit of makeup, as you can see, this is completely trash no words left on this i even have a crack in the middle and now that i think about it i don't know how sanitary that is let me know how you guys feel about that is is it sanitary because there's air getting into the product i haven't used it in a very long time and now i'm wondering should i throw it away <laughs> should i throw it away because of that crack i don't even know how that happened if i'm complete, being completely honest but this is the charlotte tilbury hollywood flawless filter and because i haven't been highlighting um in a very long time i haven't been reaching for this but there was a point in time where I use this every single day. I've even mixed it with my foundation to get me a nice little glow. And then I, I would put it on my cheeks for a highlighter. But I, I haven't used it in a while and I feel like I want to go ahead and get through it. Unless you all tell me that having this crack here would somehow make it unsanitary. Like if there was air or something. I don't know why that freaks me out. Let me know what you think about that. But I was using this very frequently, very often in conjunction with my Charlotte Tilbury bronzer, which honestly, I don't use that much either. I am not, I have, have not really been into contouring um, and I do a little bit of bronzer sometimes, maybe once a month. I haven't used it in a long time. I use the mirror and honestly, this is 
terribly dirty. I use this for my eyelids in the crease, but I don't use it for an actual bronzer. I have been using this blush on my cheeks like I got showed you guys before, this Armani brush. Blush, brush, blush. <laughs> I've been using this Armani blush more than I've been using bronze. And for no particular reason, I just haven't really been into that look lately. So anyway, tell me what you think about this Charlotte Tilbury Flawless Filter. And you know, when I have, now that I think about it, when I have been highlighting, and it's like very, very subtle. I'll show you guys this in that... Um, in my Milan video, the makeup, showing you the makeup that I bought to Milan, every time I want to have a little bit of highlight, I do use this hourglass because it's so subtle um, that I prefer this. Sometimes I use it all over my face to give me a glow and other times I use it on my cheeks. I prefer a subtle glow than this like highlighter gold glow. And I, I also might be using this wrong. Let, let's be clear. <laughs> I also might be using this wrong, but I know that I prefer this kind of look over this right now. You know, we all go, we all go through stages. That's the stage that I'm in right now. So anyway, friends, these are the things I am going to want to use up before I buy anything else. Let me know what your thoughts are on any of these. Let me know how I can use this stupid wow powder. <laughs> There's so much product in here and I hate, I hate that there's so much left. Let me know what your thoughts are and I will give you an update if I'm able to finish any of these. So let me know, do you have anything from Lily Silk? Will you be shopping at the Black Friday sale? I probably will. I need more quality, silky, cashmere pieces, right? Tell me the truth. I need the hard truth about what boots I should get rid of. And what is your if then statement? What is your conclusion? Anyway, you guys, as usual, thank you so much for watching. If you like the video, like, comment, subscribe, share the video, and I'll see you in my next video.